Heidi ho everybody. I'm Jake and this is... I'm Marlon. Hello. AKA Guy. And today we're going to be reacting to the very first Christmas episode that was ever put out by South Park. All the way back in 1997, which is just fucking nuts when you think about it. Yes. And the episode is called Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo, which really uh, cemented what South Park was all about. Uh, could be crude, have a uh, good commentary, but the gross out humor is part of the package. Part of the package, yes. And just before we start, for anyone who may not know, Mr. Hankey is a um, character that's been around since the beginning, and he's basically, no way to be around the bush, a talking piece of shit. Literally a piece of feces with eyes and a mouth, who is all about Christmas. You watch it and you might get into it, or not. We'll see with Guy here, who I don't think has ever seen Mr. Hanky before. I don't believe I have. Well, we'll see how you uh, go for it, or not, and um, without further ado, let's watch and get into the season. We wish you Merry Christmas! We wish you Merry Christmas! Lights, please. And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field. Keeping watch over their flock by night. South Park Elementary presents the birth of Jesus. Come on, Mary, push! <laughs> it's a boy! Wait, wait, Kyle, what the hell was that? You need to hold the baby by the legs, not by the head. What kind of sick weirdo are you? Sorry. <laughs> and Wendy... Garrison, what the hell do you think you're doing? Don't you realize my son is Jewish? What makes you think he should play Joseph of Arimathea? Our family doesn't celebrate Christmas. <gasps> You're not going to lay that Hanukkah crap on me, are you? But, but what? <laughs> You're not. How's Mom is here to ruin Christmas? Shut up, fat boy. I'm not the original ready. Karen. Is there anything you can do for a Christmas play that isn't related to Jesus? I can sing the Mr. Hanky song. Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poo. He loves me and I love Christmas poo. What the hell is Christmas poo? That is enough. See, that's mm. what you get when you raise your child to be a pagan. <laughs> <laughs> I am going straight to the mayor of a Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Was it the pagan remark? <laughs> you guys, look. It's snowing. It's fun. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Jewish people can't eat Christmas snow. Well, I think it's against the law, dude. Officer Barbary. What? Mm. Is it illegal for Jews to eat Christmas snow? Yes. <laughs> Come on, guys. We have to go to the mall and tell Santa Claus what we want for Christmas. I may not have Santa, but I do have Mr. Hanky the Christmas poo. He comes out of the toilet every year and gives presents to everybody who has a lot of fiber in their diet. Uh, Kyle, come on, seriously? You are really reaching right now. Well, you're going to be sorry when you see me riding around on Santa's sleigh with Mr. Hanky, fat ass. You're not going <laughs> to ride on Santa's sleigh because you're a Jew, Kyle. Good old Cartman. Easy to this one. It's hard to be a Jew on Christmas. And I can't sing Christmas songs or decorate a Christmas tree. Instead of Silent Night, I'm singing Who Hachdog I Peace, a lonely Jew. I'd be merry, but I'm Hebrew. <laughs> sounds like without the audio pitch. <laughs> we are deeply offended by the nativity scene in front of the Capitol office. Church and state are separate. No, no. The school play is doing a nativity scene. If you remove Christ, you must remove Santa and Frosty and all that garbage too. Put a stop to the cutting down of Christmas trees. <laughs> Perhaps we need a new icon for Christmas. How about Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh? <laughs> Excuse me? Kyle! Shh! It's true! He doesn't care what face you are! Don't mind him, he's a very disturbed little boy. <laughs> okay, Kyle, Says the most disturbed psychopath in cartoon I'm history. I'm a crack team of my best workers to make sure this will be the most non-offensive Christmas ever! Religious or Impossible! Any, any other suggestions? Get rid of all the Mexicans? No, Mr. Garrison, you cannot get rid of all the Mexicans. Having imaginary friends is fine, Kyle, but this simply will not do. Now, I want you to repeat after me. There is no such thing as Mr. Hanky. Lights on fire. <laughs> the reason he looks different is he's adopted and Canadian. Mr. Hanky? Santa Claus is on his way, he's loaded, get his own sled, jump 
This was the ninth episode of the show okay. in its first season. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of very positive reception from what I read. Huh. It's like one of the defining episodes of the early years. Mm -hmm. What did you think of it? I think it's part of the definition that I'm familiar with. You take this wild off, you know, out of the box kind of thought and just run with it and run with it and run with it and and, it, and it's a good touch to have every time Mr. Hankey landed on something he left a mark. Yeah. Mr. Hankey, I can see him being hit and miss with some people. I'm usually not the biggest fan of like fart jokes or gross out humor, but Trey Parker and Matt Stone, they know how to handle it very well. And they've done many episodes revolving around the subject of uh, feces, but um, this is one of their more wholesome ones. Like, yes, they put it to with Christmas music, manufactured themselves. Christmas music for musical effect on this gross humor. Yeah, like Mr. Hank, he, he's, he's gross, but he's got kind of a good side to him, at least until season 22, I believe. Well, we'll, we'll take that up in a few years. <laughs> you asked me before we started filming, why is he called Mr. Hanky? Yes, why indeed. Well, from what I read, and I read this a long time ago, Trey Parker named the character after an incident, a story from his childhood. Um, as a little boy, he says he had a bad habit of not flushing the toilet after he used it. And his father, in an attempt to make him flush, told him that if he didn't flush Mr. Hanky, which is what his dad called the shit in the toilet, he'll come to life and kill you. His dad named him Mr. Hanky? Yeah. It's like, so we still don't know why he's named Mr. Hanky. His dad named it. And I mean, you, you, you could name him Mr. Stinky. Or Mr. <laughs> something. Or Mr. Hanky. Give me uh, a break. His father, Randy Parker. Mm -hmm. It's like an ex-hippie, so who knows what goes through his head. <laughs> and, uh... Mr. Yeah, that's where the name Mr. Hanky comes from. Oh, Dad. Uh, there you go. The um, part about the whole subplots involving mm -hmm. Kyle feeling this whole I'm a lonely Jew on Christmas. Trey and Matt said that they based this off of uh, stuff they witnessed as kids. Like, they grew up at different schools, but they talked about witnessing the Jewish kids getting bullied, beat up. Oh, really? Uh, just um, ostracized, especially around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And Trey particularly talked about a uh, time where the one Jewish kid in the school qu chorus, choir, was told they shouldn't sing Christmas songs with the other kids and was told she should sing Hanukkah songs instead. And Trey said the teachers or whoever told her tried to do it as a way to make her special or to make it feel like her religion was included and Trey said it had the opposite effect and do you think yeah made her feel yeah. lonely isolated yes I isolate and you know nobody else is singing but you sing that stuff yeah yeah just the theme of don't include anything that may offend a certain group South Park still covers that to this day and <laughs> love how when they all see the non-offensive play. They're all like, oh my god, this is awful, and then they start blaming each other. Yes, having a good fight. This was also the first musical episode, and um, oh, what, really? what did you think of the songs they included? Oh, it's begun, become their trademark. They write singable music, and they carry it on, they carry tunes, and, and Trey Parker is like, the, I mean, he's the core of all of it, and, yeah. and it works. And he does it all the time. Good lyrics, got good rhymes here and there. The Lonely Jew on Christmas song. It's funny, but it also has a, I feel a little bit of genuine emotion to it. Well, I, I think that it is a social comment. Whatever else it may be, and there are other things that it is, it is that. And of course, Kyle's mom's a big fat bitch. She's the biggest bitch in the whole wide world. Yes. 
And uh, there's the uh, iconic uh, bigot. Yeah, Carmen. This is, um, he's, throughout the show, he's always been an unashamed anti-Semite. And it's ironic, given what came in the South Park post-COVID movies. Yes, and he's flipped. Yeah, converted. <laughs> it was, that was hilarious, but, yeah, he's getting on Kyle's ass, and then Mr. Hanky comes to his defense and almost gets him in trouble. Apparently, this whole concept originally was a idea for a short film that Trey Parker and Matt Stone wanted to do when they were students in college. And the the storyline for the original short that never it was never made mm -hmm. was pretty close to what ended up in the final episode. The biggest difference being in the original, it, it wasn't revealed that Mr. Hankey was real. The kid in the original story was just actually going to be crazy. Okay, there you go. A little more mean-spirited, but I guess they decided to lighten up a little for the actual episode. <laughs> I, there's a lot of fun here. It could be hit or miss with some people. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy it. It's got some heart. It's got a uh, usual bit of cynicism, but it works. And Trey and Matt have said that they can't stand the first three seasons of South Park. Because you know, a lot of people find themselves a little embarrassed by their early work. Hmm. And I guess they also felt that they just hadn't gotten the hang or swing of things yet. Well, if you got a new show, the, the show always has to find itself. Or the, the writers or whoever doing the show has to find himself. So I can understand that. And if this is them at their worst, then you should see them at their best. <laughs> and the last thing I want to mention... Mm -hmm. Just to educate you a little on the backstory, right. is uh, that part where Carmen says, Okay, talking poos where I draw the line. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Which was his trademark catchphrase for a while. Mm. Aside from screaming, you goddamn Jew at Kyle. Um, the backstory is that originally Trey and Matt tried to pitch South Park to Fox. But Fox, they were, they were on board apparently. Until they brought up the idea of Mr. Hankey. They were adamant saying they would not pick up the show if they tried to push a talking piece of shit. I could just call it a turd. That's what it is. So, Trey and Matt left and went to Comedy Central. Comedy Central, very enthusiastic. And Trey's like, tell me, how do you feel about talking poo? They were like, we're all for it. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. So Fox supports somebody who wanted to overthrow the government, but they drew the line at a talking turd. No, 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 no. You don't got me talking politics. I mean, it's the same network that had Family Guy, which <laughs> I guess probably makes Trey and Matt more glad they didn't go that route. So... All in all, hope everybody's having a happy Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Life Day, whatever. Just uh, thought this would be a fun one to go to, especially because it's been 25 goddamn years. 25, huh? Yeah. And South Park is still going strong. They are under contract to still keep going for at least another five or six years. Yes, and ka -ching. Very. They've been very, whether you like them or not, they have been consistently creative. They are, and it's extremely impressive because they do all these episodes, write, uh, animate, put it out. They, they do these episodes like once a week for like a month or two. They make them in under a week each. It's amazing. You can be very creative when you're under pressure. I know. That's all I really have to say. Glad you had a somewhat positive reaction. Howdy ho ho ho!